oftentimes, you know, one of the big kind of questions that um, that I'm asked is, what kind of ship do you recommend for Star Citizen? What do you think makes a good starship for Star Citizen? What you know, what what's your favorite fighter? That sort of thing. It's you know, it's something that comes up a lot and a lot and a lot. And I don't really dig fighters all that much. And this certainly isn't a fighter. It's more of what we will call currently a gunship. This is the freelancer mist. This is the pinnacle of the freelancer line, in my opinion. It is ugly as sin, but it is an absolute terror. It is an absolute terror. Gimbaled, big ass guns, a crap ton of missiles, and it is durable as hell. It is absolutely a solid ship it can carry cargo you can put a space bike in the back of it it has room to store your weapons your armor you can carry multiple people aboard you can log in and log out on it it's even got a bathroom i'm pretty sure though we don't have that function in game right now so don't have to worry about it when we look into the future of what star citizen is going to become we're looking at multiple star systems. We're looking at vast distances that we're going to have to cross. And even with the lightning of restrictions that we've had recently with smaller ships, you know, like fighters. I mean, I was trying it out this weekend with the Avenger Titan flying around doing a couple of missions. And yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty easy and I didn't have to overheat. Wasn't getting interdicted everywhere wasn't all that expensive on fuel though i think that that's pretty much unchanged at this point but i don't have like the finer figures for it but when you get to the future when you get to the to the point where you have systems like pyro and things like that coming up those fuel restrictions which may not seem all that heavy right now are certainly going to come into play as the universe gets much larger and you're going to want something that allows you to get to where you want to go whenever you want to get there and you know the ability to carry cargo the ability to carry your friends to carry another vehicle with you all these things are going to come in very handy in the future because you're going to face a wide variety of missions of objectives of places that you have to travel to and a fighter really is in the star citizen universe a niche application it is not a broad application it's going to be the gunships it's going to be the cutlass blacks it's going to be the cutlass reds the freelancers the corsairs you know ships like this that are really going to define the star citizen universe to a lesser extent the constellation <laughs> these are going to be the ships that um that really are going to give you the best bang for your buck in the star citizen universe these are the ships that i recommend now everyone knows that i'm not a big fan of the view from the freelancer cockpit that and i hold to that i've never apologized for that and i never will but it is a solid ship it is durable it carries a crap ton of firepower as i've stated and it you know it's one of those things that yes there are certain limitations there are certain hindrances that make flying it not all that great but overall my general impression of the freelancer miss is 100 percent solid because even if you're going into one of those missions where you have to face four or five different npcs it has the durability and it has the firepower to really kick ass in that mission and not force you to kind of go back and replace that one wing you lost you can hang out there and you can just keep fighting because it is that durable of a ship that in star citizen is going to be something that you can't overestimate the value of the ability to just keep playing despite the real physical limitations of your ship. The Freelancer doesn't pay such a heavy toll as the other fighters do. The Freelancer, certainly the miss, it allows you to just hang in there and just keep going, especially when you're carrying that many missiles. It's such a great thing. And I think that it's one of these ships that, that open doors for you. 
you let's say you're out you're doing a mission on one hand you can do this mission with let's say a buccaneer or another hand you do it with a freelancer miss you know just a usual bounty mission run of the mill nothing nothing special both ships can easily complete the mission and both ships do you happen to go you turn in whatever you have to turn in at let's say grim hex and all of a sudden you look at the marketplace on Grim Hex and you're like, oh, here's a here's something that's really super cheap on the marketplace that someone's unloading. There's 60 SCU of it. I can take this over to here and I can make a crap ton of money right now. Well, the, the Buccaneer pilot can't do that. But the Freelancer pilot can. You know, the Cutlass pilot can in a trip and a half. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying is it's it, it go like there's such... There's such a slim difference between what the gunships and the fighters can do realistically, practically, day in and day out in at least the PvE sense of the Star Citizen universe that to a certain degree, like fighters in a weird way, when you're playing Squadron 42, fighters are going to be mainline absolutely what you're doing 100% of the time. But once you get into the broader universe with all these doors opened up to you, Fighters go from being the main line that you want to follow to becoming a niche. They become like kind of a an interesting curiosity, something certainly a lot of people have. There's a lot of people, myself included, who still have a fighter kicking around somewhere in our hangars. But at the same time, most of our time is spent in ships like this. You know, even with things like the Vanguard and heavy fighters like that, you certainly you can do some of the smaller cargo missions, but some of the bigger ones may be out of your reach. Certain opportunities, you're just going to have to let them slip by because you can't take them on. And I don't think that currently there is a broad enough difference between something like this and a Vanguard to justify owning a Vanguard over owning this, especially when you think of all the other things that a ship like this can enable you to do. Fighters are kind of a curious case, and I think that it basically it does boil down to Squadron 42 being a single player game where you're kind of delivered to the battlefield by whatever. It's an Idris, it's a Bengal carrier, whatever. A lot of the things are done for you in the background. A lot of the logistical leaps that you need to bring that fighter to bear to make that fighter relevant in that game are kind of already done for you. But in Star Citizen, those things aren't done for you. And there's a lot of players who understand that. There's a lot of players who get that. You'd be surprised how many people that you talk to. And they'll say, oh, I've got, you know, a Super Hornet. Oh, I've got a Gladius. Oh, I've got a Buccaneer. Blah, 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 blah. I've got this fighter. I've got that fighter. But I also have a Cutlass Black, a Freelancer. I also have a Corsair. I also have, you know, a Constellation. I have something in the gunship range because I've played the game, I understand it, I understand what, you know, the game is going to ask of me, and I realize that unlike Squadron 42, you know, things aren't going to be done for me quite so neatly. I'm going to have to do a lot of these things on my own, and so a ship like this becomes important. And that's, you know, that's really where these ships shine, that's really where these ships become, you know the dominant force in the star citizen universe and don't like make no mistake they are the dominant force this is going to be the bread and butter of the star citizen universe yeah there's going to be javelins out there and idrises and they're certainly going to be powerful and wonderful and all those things but they're going to require a lot of people a lot of logistical work to make function in the star citizen universe you just can't sit down in the captain's chair of one of those ships and just own everybody there's a lot of setup and a lot of work that goes into making something like that work. But for the independent pilot, for the person who's going to kind of go out there on their own, which is a lot of people, believe it or not, in massively multiplayer online games, a lot of people lone wolf it. And it's ships like this that are entirely lone wolfable that open so many doors for you that are really going to be the bread and butter of Star Citizen. So when people ask me, what do I recommend? It's one of these ships in the sort of gunship-ish range, you know, things from the biggest, say the Constellation or the Corsair moving all the way down to the Freelancer, the Freelancer Miss and 
the cut the Drake Cutlass Black. That's where I recommend if you know core. That is something that I feel that you should have in your hangar. It's fine to have the fighter. Absolutely fine to have the fighter. Nothing wrong with that. But day in and day out, you're probably going to get more mileage out of your gunship. Watching. So, so, so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.